regard to the military guys and girls that have been injured in operations. Not just because I don't not think the MOD could do it right, I do think they can do it really well. We have to look at it as a more holistic approach to how we look after our veterans. And secondly, this is, is a strange thing, and most people don't get straight away, but after a few seconds they do, I asked if I could have the health and safety executive responsibility as well. Now why would the Minister for Disabled People want the health and safety? And the answer is, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm sure many of you are aware, there are myths and legends to do with health and safety which has prevented people with disabilities from getting into work for years. And if I was going to do this job, I knew I had to break that. And that's what partly what today is about and as we go forward. I'd also like the Prime Minister to have known that, for instance, Hannah, my, my godchild, is autistic, and I'd grown up with Hannah, and we knew very early on that she was autistic, and she's a lovely 26-year-old girl, which is a very vibrant young girl, but all the challenges of being part of a family, looking after some of autism, it, it, it's something that's been part of my life. Um, and I'm also dyslexic. Really interesting. Um, I've never hidden the fact I'm dyslexic. Um, I've talked about it in many speeches and many times, until I became Disability Minister, and all of a sudden I've outed myself, according to some people. Um, the reason I don't read speeches is because I don't read speeches very well. Hands up in the audience that found maths really hard at school. English? Well, I'm not thinking all of you are being very honest with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but, and it's important, it's important that if, if I can be honest and say, look, I've had challenges in my life. Nothing like some of the challenges that you've had in the audience. Nothing like the challenges that my very good friend Simon Weston, when you hear from him later on, has had, or the challenges that Simon has had. But if we can be more honest with each other and say, hey, up a second, you know, these are the things that have affected my life, then perhaps I can do this job a little bit better. Um, I'm, I've been a patron of many, many charities, including the newest one, which I'm actually a trustee of, which the Prime Minister didn't know about, which you've all seen the Paralympics, this is the Paralympics badge. Um, I was at number 10 yesterday with the Paralympics coming home with their unbelievable medals, they did fantastically well. But in skiing, it's mostly people that are the visual or physical disabilities. There's been hardly any skiing for people with learning difficulties and mental health issues. Hardly any. The reason now is a new charity called the Snowbility, started in my constituency in the largest snow centre in the country, where we're actually getting people that have been, you know, the parents that are wanting to better skill with Brighton. Just like we have done historically with physical disabilities, but actually let them out there. There's a young fellow there who's got autism, a uh, violent form of autism at, at times, but he's channeled it through his skiing, and he's now qualifying as a coach. Just an amazing experience that that young man has been going through as we rolled it up for the country. Now, did the Prime Minister know any of that when like, he appointed me? No, that's not the way the government works. You're a, you're, you're a round game, a round hole, and not in my case, and, and not quite. What it has allowed me to do is, as well as coming out and boring you there first thing in the morning, kind of still first bit, I always do the first bit because that way that I don't get you asleep later on. Um, but actually, to be able to say cross government, what are we doing now? We can all pat ourselves on the back. We can all pat ourselves on the back of what we've done in the past. But that is in the past. Let's look about what we can do going forward. And so, for instance, last week, and this is an amazing thing as well, for the first time in 40 years, there was a forum of ministers from all government departments that sat down for the first time, chaired by me, all at Minister of State level, almost completely at Minister of State level, saying, right, what are we doing going in the short term, mid term, long term, going forward? for people with disabilities and long term illnesses. First time in 40 years. I was amazed, I trusted I would never we'll sit down and do this, this hasn't happened before. And the Prime Minister actually said to these ministers, you <coughs> will come and you will participate and you will do this. That's the sort of reason why we're doing the disability conference here today. For, for many people, as I've gone around the country, for many organisations, the big companies get it. And actually the SMEs get it that there is a fear that it's going to be expensive. Health and safety will be the fear. The adaptations will cost a fortune. Actually, are these people going to be reliable? Are they going to go sick very often? Are they going to do all these myths out there? And actually, if I can break down some of that, specifically if I'm responsible for health and safety executive, and say, actually, most of this is complete rubbish. If, you, you know, if, if you're saying to someone they can't, work in an environment because of health you've got to have a really, really good reason for that. I was at ASDA in Leeds fairly recently, and they told me a story of a gentleman, I met him later on in the day, 
who was one of their quality um, managers. And he had a degenerative uh, 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 eye illness, disease, that then in a very short space of time, he went from full sight to requiring a guide dog and very, very limited vision. HSC, I'm trying to remind my hands, initially said he can't carry on with his job. Fortunately, his line managers said, no, no, let's look at the other end of the telescope. How can we keep him in his job? How can we let this man continue to have a career in something he loves doing? He's a valued person now, before, why can't we keep him on? And actually, once you challenge that, and that's what I ask all of you in the audience to do, to, to challenge yourself. They then realise that health and safety had absolutely nothing to do with whether or not he could keep his job. There was some minor adaptations that needed to be required. And I met him in the warehouse with his guide dog still doing his job. Now, the bigger companies can do that. But more people are employed in this country than anywhere else but SMEs. And the job of this, and the job of my department, and the job of the people that are here to help you today, is to give you that confidence to give those people a chance. Because they will be the most loyal. They will be the most punctual. Because you've given them that opportunity. All we're saying is to look from the other end of the telescope and instead of saying why you can't do it, say how you can do it. And that way we'll give these people a fantastic.